Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back. We are obviously an NBA show and we will talk NBA in a moment, but we're also a sports show and uh, sports taking an absolutely awful turn last night. So we want to send our positive thoughts. If you pray are inclined to do so, do that as well to Buffalo Bills safety, Jamar Hamlin, um, who collapsed on the field last night in what is just some of the worst images that sports can offer, unfortunately. And Shams, it wasn't just the NFL community that was obviously reacting to this in real time, but the NBA had a bunch of games and those guys were finding out about what had happened as games ended. And I understand there was just a lot of, a lot of outpouring of feeling from them as well. Yeah, there was a lot. And like you said, Michelle, obviously our continued prayers are our well wishes with DeMar Hamlin, his family, and, and just, you know, that, that site that we saw, we, you know, players gave their immediate support throughout the NBA, whether it was Donovan Mitchell after scoring 71 points, LeBron James had another big game, 40 plus points. Uh, he offered his condolences right after his game. Klay Thompson uh, had a big 50 point game. He gives his condolences and then dozens and dozens of more players on social media. And Michelle, just a quick update from two uh, people close to Drew, uh, DeMar Hamlin. Um, he remains sedated and he will have a tube uh, for his breathing in his body uh, through his throat for the next few days. And so our thoughts, of course, will be with him uh, throughout his recovery. And we're, we're going to keep praying for that. Absolutely. I think sports fans and fans everywhere will be watching the story all day, every day until more information comes out for us. We are going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, it was a huge night in the NBA and a lot of points were scored. And we will talk about every single one of those points when we come back. Welcome back to Run It Back, guys. There was a there was a lot going on in the NBA last night, and we have go, we have to start with Donovan Mitchell. What is happening with the points in this crazy league? Season high, seventy one points, led in team over the Bulls. By the way, Demar Derozan had a measly forty four. No big deal. Uh, it was an overtime game, of course. Mitchell actually scored or assisted on ninety nine of the one hundred and forty five points. That is the most since you guessed it, Wilt. That name has come up a lot lately this season so far, Chandler. Uh, your reaction when you saw this result? I mean, this was crazy. This was one of the greatest individual performances ever in, in the history of the NBA. When you look at this kid, uh, this is the most points in the last 17 years since Kobe, the eighth most of all time. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just an elite company. Just to think about all the legends and all the players to, to kind of play in this league. And, and Donovan Mitchell is now, no matter what else happens, he's he's in that group. And it's how it happened, too. It was such an exciting game. He did it in so many different ways. They were down 21 points and, and without their two of their three best players, with Garland and Mobley out. Uh, this was super impressive. And this just kind of shows you that Donovan Mitchell is, is on another level. He's really helping this team possibly get home court advantage in a really tough conference. Uh, he also had 11 assists. Like the guy, it was just 22 or 34 from the field. He did it so efficient, so excited. Um, and, and this was, again, this is one of the best performances I've ever seen. Greatest cab yeah. of all time, Eddie. I don't know. Mark. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I like the setup. The first 70 point tennis assist game of all time, which doesn't even sound like a real thing. You, you, you'd be hard pressed to do this on 2k. If you were, if you were being a ball hog the whole game, this is insane. I looked down at my phone during the, the nets and Spurs game yesterday. I couldn't believe the numbers on the screen and there was still more time left on, on the, on the, in the scoreboard. So it was just nuts to watch this and kind of see those types of shots he was making. He was, what was he? 22 of 37 from the floor. Like it, it, I know he made a lot of free throws. I bet he's pissed. He left four free throws on the floor <laughs> because he could have had 75 of, uh, you know, look, you can try to minimize it and say he had overtime. He had extra five mm. minutes. Uh, he did this in a close game within the flow of the offense. He scored 56 points in the second half of overtime. Like, you cannot That's minimize this. This is one of the greatest performances of all time. There's no yeah. two ways about it. Luca had overtime, and we celebrated that. And that was five minutes ago, by the way. That's how quickly we've outdone ourselves here. <laughs> but not to be dismissed or ignored, Robin Lopez also had a night last night. So let's not ignore that. He wanted to get it out of the way right away. Uh, combined for 72 with Donovan Mitchell last night. Hashtag historic game. 
Indeed. Look, we're in New York right now. Um, and Shams, there was just a collective cry if you really listened last night into the streets of this great, great city. Because we all know how the offseason could have maybe sort of had Donovan Mitchell becoming a Nick. And then, of course, that didn't happen. How should Knicks fans feel this morning? I mean, I, I'm sure they feel they feel they might feel terrible. Um, you know, Donovan Mitchell <laughs> wanted to be a, a, a Nick. I think he he's spoken about it publicly, privately. There was definitely reporting that I did dur- during that moment. But I reported right after that trade to Cleveland. The, the Knicks' final offer was R.J. Barrett, two first-round picks, two second-round picks, another young player like Emmanuel Quickly. They only needed either Quentin Grimes or another first-round pick to get a deal done, and they essentially from what I was told, refused to give up another asset. Donovan Mitchell ends up in Cleveland for that haul that they ended up with with, with Lowry Marketing, uh, multiple first-round picks, swaps, etc. So uh, Cleveland just outdid them, got Donovan Mitchell, and right now he's performing like the, kind of that franchise centerpiece we all thought. Uh, he's just the third player in the last 25 years to score 70 or more points. All were shooting guards. Devin Booker, Kobe Bryant, and then Donovan Mitchell last night. Yeah, this could Good this list. could go down as one of the dumbest non trades in the history. Of the <laughs> like, and you know what's like, like? I like I like Grimes. I like R.J. Barrett. Yeah. But if you have a chance to get a franchise young cornerstone stud like Donovan Mitchell, and, and you just don't do it because of whatever reason you, you know you like the way the kids mesh in, uh, with Grimes and you like your picks, like. Uh, I'm sorry. That is so, so wrong and so bad. And they got to feel, you know, like, damn, we really missed out on this kid, especially after a night like last night. Mm-mm. Yeah. Look, you know, this is a hometown kid. This is a sure shot all-star, probably an all-star starter. And you could have had this in the garden. You could have had him doing this and, and maybe he's not scoring 71 with on the right conditions, but you have your franchise player that you've been searching for, for, how long if you're the Knicks? You know, you had a few years of mellow and then you go back beyond that. You've been searching for this guy for decades. And yes, it was the hall a lot. Of course, it was a ton. It, it was a lot of draft picks. You would you'd have to give up your starter level players, but he's that good. And he's showing that all season long. He showed that in the playoffs before. I'm not sure what the reservations were, but I know the Cavs are thanking them for being <laughs> for being a little mm-hmm. reluctant to make that trade. And, and, and they're going to ride that straight to the playoffs. Uh, look, the 71 points, most since Kobe with with the 81 shutout Jalen in 2006. But it feels like the seal of huge points games has officially been broken. Do we think we'll see Mitchell? Mitchell specifically flirt with 70 again, Chandler. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's hard to say. A lot of guys can't get there. I mean, you look at Clay last night, you look at DeMar, like these guys get hot and the, at the clip that the three-point shot is taken now. Uh, and how many times these guys are getting to the free throw line. I think we're going to continue to see these explosive scoring numbers, um, you know, and and I think they're not going to stop anytime soon. And the most impressive part is how efficient Donovan did it last night, like being 22 of 34 from the field and seven of 15 from the three, having 71 points. That is insane. That is very, very hard to do. And you look across the board, a lot of these other guys last night had unbelievable games and it's not even close to what this did. This dude did in a close game in a win at home. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was very, very impressive. And they got an absolute stud in Donovan Mitchell. I feel like you're so wired after a game like this. I, I don't imagine you fall asleep anytime <laughs> soon, Eddie. Look, and on the other side of the thing, the Bulls, I mean, it wasn't a bad game. They just happened to be on the wrong end of what was a historic night. But this, they they almost won it in regulation. So give me a silver lining, Eddie. I mean, it was only in overtime because of a miraculous play. Another purposely missed free throw that worked out. I feel like this <laughs> never happened before. That we've seen like four or five in the last two weeks. Uh, you know, you, you you come away feeling strong. They were able to compete with this team on their home court, and it took this historic performance to beat them and, and 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 Donovan had to keep this up until late in the overtime uh you know yeah you you feel like you're playing much better ball since Shams uh kind of blew the whistle on them a few weeks ago and it, you feel like you're trending upwards problem for them is you got Brooklyn coming in town tomorrow and you know that's not going to mm. be an easy out and it, it goes from there so it doesn't let up in the Eastern Conference right now so the Bulls can't rest on yeah we competed they have to actually start winning some of these games the silver lining for the Bulls is that they've won five of eight. But like last night, there was a screenshot I saw, a couple of screenshots last night. Donovan Mitchell 
kind of committed a lean violation on that free throw. I'm not going to lie. The ball was still in the air. <laughs> and got caught. Listen, it was a great play, but I did peep that on, online on Twitter. So, listen, for the Bulls, I'm sure they're going to look back at that. I think Billy Donovan even spoke about it post game that we're going to see that in, in the referee report after the game where Donovan Mitchell committed a lane violation on that free throw. So, that's an unfortunate luck uh, uh, you know, showing for the Bulls. They've had a couple of those moments this year where even the other night, uh, DeMar DeRozan was fouled on a potential game winning attempt. Um, you know, but those those things are part of the game. Shout out to Donovan Mitchell. Sometimes you got to get luck too. It happens. Sometimes a little karma kicks in for whatever reason. All right, next game, Hawks. Mm-mm-mm. Seconds <laughs> away from beating the Warriors. That would have been our fifth straight parlay win, selfishly. But Mr. Divincenzo with the other plans, clutch three. <laughs> we go into overtime. Clay Thompson ends this thing with 54. Then we go into double overtime. Kevon Looney. Kevon Looney is the guy that got it done, seals the deal in double OT. Uh, Chandler, we'll start with you because you're the one that ruined our parlay. Do you regret betting against Clay and the Warriors last night? I mean, this was we the Hawks. We now that I took them in my parlay, I'm saying we, <laughs> uh, we had so many opportunities just to close this game out, and this is just the consistent struggles that the Hawks have. This is the level of maturity maturity that they have they can't finish a game and Trey actually played very good last night he missed hit some big free throws he had 30 points and 14 assists but yeah these are the type of plays at the end of the game where you, you gotta lock in you gotta get a rebound you gotta box out and I know Nate is showing this film over and over again uh because these are the little plays that add up and that cause losses just like Chicago last night like yeah Donovan did he did create a, a lane violation there, but you got to box out. One of the guards from behind him has to get in there and, and avoid even bringing luck into a play. So this was a great game. It was exciting. Clay Thompson, it's good to see him. And you know what? He had an extra pep in his step last night. He was hitting step backs. He was going off the dribble. He got up 39 shots. I, I don't care how many he made. That is hard to do in a game and takes a lot of conditioning. Just to even get those up and to make 10 threes in a game is a special special performance and this is what they're going to have to do they're going to have to have nights like this unfortunately to keep staying afloat from either him or jordan pool uh while this basically their whole team is out but this this is a big win for them and it was a really really exciting game and, and i'm happy to see clay kind of you know putting up gaudy numbers like this like we've seen in the past yeah this was a, a fun game i don't know if it was a classic there's a lot of mistakes late guys look tired uh, jacking up some ugly shots, uh, Dejounte Murray and Trey <laughs> Young. It, it, Trey got an offensive rebound on a long jumper and just threw a shot, a three up in, in Traymond's face for some reason. It was a lot of curious play out there, but you you got to love the the performance from Clay. Hit a big shot at the end of the first overtime off the dribble, which isn't necessarily his forte, and it's just a little bit of poetic justice. They get sent into overtime off of three offensive rebounds, and then they lose in double overtime off of another offensive rebound. Kevon Looney, one of the more unheralded <laughs> pieces of this dynasty, right? They drafted him in the end of the first round. They've had him for three rings, and he just seems to come up big in each playoff run. I remember the Celtics series last year, people were wondering if he could even stay on the floor because he was slowing them down, and he ends up playing big in the last three games of that series, a ton of offensive rebounds. I mean, he, he's, he's one of the gems of, of this dynasty, which is, you know, a little tough to say when they drafted Steph Curry, they drafted Klay Thompson, they drafted Draymond Green, but this is how you keep your run going. You take your end of the first round picks and you pick somebody as vital to your team as Kevon Looney. So it's dope for him to have that moment. One of the few guys on that team with a buzzer beater under his belt now. And, uh, you know, big night for them. And as they get closer and closer to Steph Curry coming back, they're creeping up the standings and they're looking like the Warriors we thought they were going to be before they had the little rough stretch uh, in November. And by the way, while we're on Looney, he's he's so valuable because he's available. This guy played every game last year and he's played every game this year. Like that is really, really hard to do. And he's not going to show up a lot in the box scores, but like last night, 14 and 20 rebounds. That is so, so necessary for this team that's just hoisting threes and, and doing what they do in the stuff how they play so yeah i'm with eddie you know looney is a is a huge piece going forward for them yeah Lo looney's always been just an amazing yeah he's been an amazing veteran player for them i mean even when the whole draymond pool thing happened kevon looney was one of the guys on the front lines as far as leadership perspective but i mean for me it was great seeing clay thompson make and take 
clutch shots again. He's been telling everyone all year publicly, privately, he's going to figure this out. He's going to turn it around. He got off to a really slow start. And I think you're seeing those averages come back. The shooting percentages come back. And I think the one silver lining you can probably take from Steph's absence right now is that Klay Thompson is getting a lot more usage. He's getting a lot more looks. The ball's in his hands a lot more. They don't really have anyone else to turn to besides him and Poole at guard. And then you got Kaminga and Draymond Green playing a vital role as well. Um, but listen, Klay Thompson is one of the greatest shooters of all time. Um, you know, him, Dame, and, and Steph are the only players in the NBA that have scored, uh, that have hit nine or more threes for at least 10 games. So uh, Klay Thompson, one of the best shooters ever. I think that gets overlooked a lot. You know, what's funny about Clay Thompson, too, is because he's he has been more vocal this year than ever. Um, I'm clearly listening to the outside noises, but he seems more relieved when he has games like this than even the fans do, as if he's convincing himself. I'm officially back, Chandler, from what you saw last night. And we know how much time he has lost in the last few seasons. Does it look like he's officially back back? Are we there? I mean, I don't, it's tough still because going through injuries like he's went through, you need games like this for your own confidence. And you can tell how vocal he's be, he's been with the critics and with media. It starts lingering and you start having those doubts. And I don't care who you are when you miss that amount of time and you struggle the way he struggled coming back, nothing feels as good as him going out and, and doing this. And yeah, you could say he took some bad shots. He was inefficient, but the fact that he, he still has that mental space to take these shots. And the fact that he's making a lot of them is super, super huge just for his mindset, for his confidence moving forward. And this is a great opportunity with those guys out where it, it it's him and Jordan Poole. Nobody else on that team is going to score a lot of points. Nobody else on that team is going to take the shots that those guys take. And this is a great time for him to, to build that confidence, to build that endurance. And nights like this go miles for, for Clay Thompson's future. Sean, yeah, I, just I know. Love oh, the go ahead. I, I just love that he's able to back up the talk. We were kind of laughing at him. All of us on this show, people everywhere else were like, yo, come on, Clay. Like, you're, you're, you're crying, you're whining. But he's able to back it up. He he told Charles Barkley, yo, I still got a lot left in the tank. And he's shown us. That performance last night was incredible. It was vintage Clay. It was one of his best games of his career, which is crazy to say after all he's been through with his injuries and just kind of just getting through the the mentality of that. And, and and it's exciting to see that the, the game is a little bit more fun when Clay Thompson is out there being Clay Thompson we know and love, and and so it was it was great to see last night. Well said. And I, way, I, if, if Donovan Mitchell didn't play last night, I, this this he's leading the show. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was hurt and I came back. I had like twenty five one game, and I thought I was the man because I was like back. <laughs> I took the shot. This dude just had fifty four points. Like that is that is that is that is really really impressive. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's it's the, the points thing right now is just out of control. I, I want to go to the Atlanta Hawks for a second because, Shams, you had the reporting on Nate McMillan and sort of what seems to be the uneasiness and internally the, I guess, the drama that is going on. As far as this kind of a loss, double OT in it, does this do anything for the confidence within that in the ranks of that team? It doesn't help. Um, you know, there were a couple moments down the stretch there where, you know, rotationally they didn't like on the last play where DiVincenzo had that three. They had John Collins, who was leading the team in rebounds. I think at that point had 12 rebounds. Um, he was on the bench uh, for that play uh, where you need a rebound. You need to secure that moment. So just little moments like that, of course, are going to be something you look at as a coaching staff. You look at as a roster moments that you can have back. But these, these this road trip that they're on right now is going to be a tough trip. Um, this is definitely not uh, one that they wanted to go on, especially after an L to the Lakers. They wanted to win that game against the Lakers on Friday, um, especially given everything that's going on. But right now, this team just got to pick it up and, and try to get a W because that's what that's they really need that right now. Yeah, this loss is almost more frustrating, I think, than any silver lining. You're playing a team where, where you're pretty much fully healthy um, and this team is not. And you had multiple opportunities to win this game this is a game I don't care who they are they're missing a, a lot of their players this is a game the Atlanta Hawks should have won last night and they made a lot of mental mistakes they made a lot of physical mistakes and, and this is this is a game that's going to be tough to swallow because this is one that they should have had um, and with all the drama and all the noise surrounding them this is only going to hurt them and, and and I don't see silver lining in this loss at all man 
I guess that was just me trying to be positive in the new year, trying to see a silver lining for them, but I guess not. All right, fine. Uh, moving on, LeBron, again, just another ho-hum, 40-plus points for LeBron James. Too many points. What is going on? He had 43, leading the Lakers to win over the Hornets. That The play of the game. Oh, good. That's happening. Uh, play of the game, the reverse alley-oop, um, who, by the way, I'm not sure you guys know, is 38 years old, Chandler. How surprised. Like, at this point, we've talked about how old he is and what he's still capable of doing. What do you feel when you watch him doing this? I feel like he's 27. I feel like he's been, <laughs> I feel like he's, which age is just a number, Michelle. It doesn't really matter. You know, hey. Uh, but uh, yeah, this guy, the thing, look at, like that is not a normal dunk for a 27 year old, let alone LeBron James. <laughs> And the fact that he's doing is, is still doing this at this clip in front of Mike Love that Eddie said last night, Michael Ugh. Jordan, team, like you know he was going to ball. That was a great pick, Eddie. Um, and he's with <laughs> 500 points of Kareem, and, and he is just ripping off chunks of those points every single night. Um, and he's making us somewhat believers in the Lakers that if they can find a way to get Anthony Davis healthy, this is a this is a tough this is a tough out. So. Games like last night, it was, the shots he was taking or the step backs, the one-legged fadeaways, the, the way he was doing it last night was really, really nuts. Yeah, I don't think it can be overstated how ridiculous this is. It, it's not even the age at this point. It's the fact that he's played 20 NBA seasons and he's still at this level. He's averaging 29 points a game this season. He's eighth in the league in scoring. He's also had, adding eight, eight assists on top of that, eight rebounds, excuse me. And so it, he should not be performing at this level at, at this point in his career. It's the best 20th season we've ever seen, which doesn't <laughs> even sound real. Uh, and, and the craziest part is it looks like he can keep doing this for a while. I know he was joking about playing until Bronny comes around or playing until he's 45 or whatever, but it really looks like he could do this for a few more years and then even tail off into like a role player level after that if he wants. It's absurd that he's doing this every night. And and Darvin Ham was speaking last night about letting him carry the team and him taking care of his body. And that's all great and fine and dandy. But yeah, you'd love to have Anthony Davis there to carry a little bit of the load and lighten it a little bit for them. I know it's not translated into a playoff spot just yet. They've won a few no. games here in the last week. But it's it's still it, – it's funny like Chandler mentioned. If we don't have that 71-point game, maybe this is the story of the night. Or maybe it's still 54 from Clay, but it's <laughs> it's almost like we're desensitized to the fact that he's doing this every night. And I get it. We've been dealing with this guy and his story for 22, 23 years, and, and it's almost old. But it is ridiculous that he's doing this at 38 years old, 20 years into his career, and it does not look like he's stopping anytime soon. Well, it's 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 baby steps, Eddie. You know the Lakers are creeping up on a on a playing spot, so it's it's going to be baby steps, especially without <laughs> AD. It seems like he is still a ways away. Uh, but to me, this is just LeBron's greatness. I, I think you just at this point, like you said, you you become desensitized to it. He has these big games, especially at this age, the the back to back forty plus point games. I mean, it's unreal what he's doing at his age and so um we'll see when ad is going to be back on the floor uh, but at this rate he should be passing kareem's record by mid-february ish so uh we'll see exactly when that'll be yeah i mean yeah, at this point this. if he well, well i was gonna well, i was gonna ask gonna... you eddie because if he if he averages 30 he's gonna catch him he's gonna catch kareem in about 16 games so i don't know who, which unlucky team is gonna get to host that moment but yeah are, are you excited to watch that eddie i mean as a fan of the game yeah, I, I hope the running back crew gets to go and, and watch <laughs> this from somewhere close. Uh, give a nudge to FanDuel. But no, it, it is amazing. It's one of those <laughs> records that, you know, it's not like it's 756 and you just run it off the top of your head and know what the record is. But you know Kareem scored the most points ever. You know it's a big deal. And you, you didn't think this was ever going to happen again. I remember when, like, LeBron was younger, it was like, yeah, maybe he could get to X amount. But he's, he's a pass-first guy, so he's not going to get there. But he's this far in his career. And it's within his sight, and he'll likely do it, you know, if, if, without injuries this year. Uh, there was a stat last night, and it was uh, nobody over 35 uh, years of age has scored 40 in back-to-back -back nights besides two guys. It was it was LeBron and it was Mike. And you kind of just love to see <laughs> those two names on a list be the only names on a list. But, yeah, this is walking history, and we're seeing it every night. And the big game is coming up soon. And I, 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 I look to them giving them coronation kind of like they did Steph last year. And it's going to be a sight to see. I can't do the math. I can't even figure out which team could possibly be. I'm trying to figure out the three-team window in there to see who it might be. But do you – I mean, look, he is very aware 
of what is going on at all times. And he loves the drama. Does he get that extra point? Like, does he do a hook shot? Is he going to try to do something like that to make it just uber iconic? I mean, Chandler, I like, that's not out of the, can we bet on that? Like, I feel like there's a chance. Uh, I don't, honestly, he's going to do something and it's going to happen <laughs> sooner than later. This guy, he's healthy. He's on a mission. As much as he's saying he doesn't care about that. He is <laughs> That's pretty much I would all I'd be playing for if I was him right now. My team's <laughs> and the more I score, the better chance we have to win. So I am if I'm him, I am gunning for the next 484 points until I break that record. Yeah, I'm calling uh, BS on what he told the fan. Still think he's Thank gonna cry. You. I think he's gonna yeah, I think he's gonna do it. You think? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, it is all he's playing for, Chandler, for the record. I just want that. <laughs> like that is, that's all they're playing for right now. Fact. Well, we've run out of time. That's unfortunate. Um, no, I'm just kidding. We have to talk nets. Shut up, Eddie, just ahead of time. I want to go ahead and say that. There was another game last night. Um, 12 straight for Brooklyn. And they, they look good. I know you left the game with Slight concern in your heart, Eduardo. Uh, can you please tell us how you could possibly have had that after last night? Uh, I didn't. I mean, I know they play the Celtics next oh, week and they play the Pelicans this weekend. So I'm a little concerned about those. I'm actually concerned about the Bulls game as well. But uh, oh, really? what I what I liked about last night is they took care of business. They, they, they blew out a team that they should have blown out. They did the same the other day in Charlotte. And to me, that's the marker of them really hitting their stride. They, they were squeaking these wins out. Uh, earlier this month against teams they should have been running away from. And now they're actually handling their business. Got a whole quarter of garbage time for the guys to rest. And like I mentioned last week, Kyrie looks amazing. Like he he looks outstanding yeah. out there. And it's not even just the dunk. It's his ability to make the three off the dribble. Him using seemingly only doing layups with his left hand. But he just looks free on the court and he's unstoppable. And then you have Kevin doing whatever Kevin's going to do. You know, I was, uh, we were laughing with Kevin after the game because he missed, I think, his first three shots. And then he didn't miss again after that for the rest of the night. So it's like he was all frustrated. He missed the layup. And, and he was chirping at us on the sideline and then he ends up <laughs> never missing again because he's amazing. And he wasn't even, didn't look like the best player on the court because Kyrie Irving was ridiculous. That dunk, you know, we've been kind of teasing uh, him about when he's going to start dunking again. We haven't seen him dunking forever. And he's been saying, oh, I can get up there still. And that was the loudest I've heard bar plays since I've been coming there for the last few years. It was, it was insane. So uh, it was nice to see him take care of business, tough little road trip on the way now. And then, and obviously the Boston game next week, to really prove themselves but yeah look they're creeping up on the one seed and uh it's it's gonna be interesting now going forward for them depending on what they want to do with their roster how they want to improve and, and where things go yeah again and when, when you have kd and Kyrie playing at a clip like this and then you get 18 from tj warren and 16 from curry uh i, I still think they got to get joe harris going he has really been struggling but it, yeah the nets are now they're, they're having fun and if, if the first month or whatever the season wasn't there and all that drama wasn't there we would just be looking at the nets right now like a real contender and they've had a great season so as long as that is in the past and they continue to, to grow and, and play at this level and do like, but like, like Eddie said, nights like this, bury them, like get out fourth quarter, get your guys out and, and, and get ready for the next game. Um, and, and Kyrie is on another level right now. He, he has really stepped his game up that I haven't seen him do that dunk like that. in, in years He's scoring 139 yeah. points, like the nets look really, really tough. They look motivated and they're having fun. I mean, I, I I had my bold prediction last night was I think the Nets come out of the East. If they, as long as Kyrie doesn't wake up one morning and decide to do a Kyrie thing, I, I just really, you know what's fun about being a fan of a team when they're on a winning streak like this? And Eddie, I'm going to go to you first on this one because I don't know if you agree with me. Is you literally for a split second in your mind, you're like, what if they just win every game here on out? Like that could happen, <laughs> right? Like, so I ask you this, they're at 12 straight right now. What do, where do you see it ending? Do you see it ending? I mean, I definitely got asked yesterday what the record was and, and if I remember the 27 from the Heat <laughs> and, and all of this stuff, and, and it's cool to look forward and, and see that. And, you know, I'm, I'm hearing combos about it's harder to get tickets now and, and they're they're more expensive on SeatGeek and all this good stuff. So, yeah, guys are definitely looking ahead. And, and I think, you know, if they get through this road trip and they come home and they're looking forward to that Boston game next Thursday – then you then it starts creeping in. Then it starts saying, okay, can we push it to 20? Do we go from there? What is the record? That 33, that's 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 <laughs> tough to get. Um, you know, it's tough to even think about that. You're only at 12. You're not even halfway there. You're barely a third of the way there. But 
Yeah, I mean, if they get through this road trip, and and who knows what Zion if he's going to play, and then Brandon Ingram, and and it's always tough to go to Miami on a, on a Sunday mm-hmm. night, and then you know who knows how how, how the weekend's going to go in Miami. But uh, yeah, they're looking like one of the better teams in the league right now, and 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 they're a tough out for everybody every night out, and that's how you get a win streak going. Yeah, and like we said, this is this is it's, they're not going to win every game, right? They're going to have an they off could. night. They're gonna get one of those guys <laughs> that would be incredible if they did. Honestly, <laughs> I hope they did. Um, <laughs> but again, when you have Kai and you have KD playing at this level, I saw a quote last night. Ben Simmons said it was easy last night, and I'm like. If, if he's saying that, then, then things <laughs> and, it's like, and they're rolling. So I'm happy for them. I feel like all their, their bad stuff is in the past. And, and this is really, really impressive what they're doing. And, and again, when you have two guys that are top five guys like, like KD and Kyrie, anything is possible. Yeah. Look, the, the team is confident. And like you mentioned, they're having fun. You can see that they're having fun. The Kyrie dunk when Yuta hits the three guys are running on the court. They're, they're excited. They're enjoying themselves. And I think, again, to contrast this with earlier in the season, they walked into that back-to-back against the Pacers in November like, okay, this is where we turn our season around. We're a better team than them. We're going to win these two, and we're good. Well, they lost the first one. And, yeah, they won the second one, but they got their coach fired in that second one as well. So it's just an entirely different approach. They they weren't overconfident last night like they were against the Pacers, but they were in good spirits, and, and, and they feel that they're just a better team than the other teams on the court when they walk out there. And it shows they showed up with a focus last night and they jumped out to an early lead and they kept that lead going the entire night. That they did indeed. Uh, it was tough. It's like, Oh man, maybe the first, Nope, it wasn't, it wasn't at all. Uh, Shams. <laughs> thank you. We shall see you bright and early tomorrow as it is Wednesday. And for us, we're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, how about Giannis? Maybe an MVP Kyrie all-star for sure. And Steph, an underrated trash talker. We shall discuss when run it back to turns. Grizzlies break through. Bain's got to get it in. Gets it in for Clark. Bounces for Morant. Morant downhill to the rim. Lays it up. Too strong. Ball game. Warriors win it. Morant didn't get enough body control to lay it in. Warriors win. 117-116. Too hard. Going for his help, fellas. Come on. Come on. I know. I know. I know. That's too soon. That's just too soon and too close (laughs) in that moment, Chandler. Look, Steph Curry should be a great trash talker. I have no idea. Is he underrated as a trash talker? Yeah, he is, but it's, it's like a friendly, arrogant banter. It's not like, (laughs) like a physical, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to punk you. It's more like I'm the best player on the court. You can't stop me. I'm going to hit this shot. I'm going to dance and do things like that. And, (laughs) It's funny because he's such a good dude with such a great reputation, but a lot of, like, he gets the benefit of the doubt a lot. A lot. If other players would do half the stuff he does, people would hate them. And people would try and, like, you know, foul them hard, and they would not let you dance like this on, on my court. So it's the way he does it. It's a gift. It's a very good delivery. It's, it's, it's harmless, but, yeah, he definitely does – talk a lot and celebrate a lot where if, if I'm having a bad game or if he's doing what he's doing usually and they're dominating us, I'm pissed off. <laughs> he's yeah, right like, there. It's kind of <laughs> hilarious that we get this, you know, quietly legendary moment. We didn't even know happened. And it's him going, this is fun, right? This is, <laughs> that's his crazy. <laughs> but we're talking about a guy who, you know, we, he's literally copped a squat it pantomime dropping a deuce on a court so <laughs> this is not the friendliest basketball player of all time very sneaky part about this uh about this moment he wasn't on the court for this defensive possession so no, he, he, he ran amazing. over from the sideline to let them know that yo you're going down but uh, no i think he's definitely underrated as trash soccer and i like that he's kind of like secretly got this edge to him because he's that he's that good and he should he should let you know that he's really that guy when he gets that chance but yeah, him being defensive sub dog makes it a little bit more funny. Amazing. So I, I so love that clip. Yeah. It's hilarious too, because he's just like eavesdropping and they're like team conversation. Yeah. It just he's comes right up. There. Yeah. Like I feel like somebody else, maybe not job, but somebody else that's just too much in my personal space in a moment where I need to take a second. Like I would have pushed him or something. But it's that baby face. That baby face buys you so much equity it's just like oh he's sweet <laughs> meanwhile just as you said dropping court. deuces on if, your court <laughs> if, if, Draymond, if Draymond had come up and done that it's a fight 
It's just it's yeah, it would have been a scuffle. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no one's buying that. First of all, get out of my space. Hey, and there's that. All right, we're going to do a little you buying that. We haven't done this in a minute. And so I'm happy to be back doing it. First up, we got to do some Giannis here. He's averaging 32, almost 12 rebounds, over five assists a game. Right now on pace to be the first player with a 30-10-5 season since MVP Russ Chandler. Are you buying his MVP chances this season? I mean, he's definitely right there. And obviously the value of him on this team and the season he has and the efficiency he's he's doing it at. And he's just a dominating force. The way he gets downhill, um, the way he gets to the, the line, it's really impressive. It's just tough because I, I have Jokic in front of him. I have Tatum in front of him. I have Kevin Durant in front of him. And I have Luka Ooh. in front of him. So it, it's, it's tough. Um, he's having a great year. He's always going to have years like this. He's just an unstoppable force that's always going to put up great numbers. He's, he's going to be efficient. He's if if this guy could ever get a consistent three point shot, I don't know what would happen, but listen, if they happen (laughs) to go on a huge run on a heater here and win 20 out of in a 25 out of 30, and they separate themselves as the best team in the East. Yeah. He's right there. But I just think right now there's a lot of guys and a lot of other teams um, that are ahead of him. Yeah, there's a reason we talk about MVP every day on this show because it's such a crowded race right now and it's sliding every single day. And we have, yeah, Kevin Durant's on a 12-game win streak, but we have what Jokic is doing in Denver as well. We have Jason Tatum doing what he's doing as the one seed still. And, and, and you know, somebody like Giannis gets lost in the shuffle even though he's putting up legendary numbers that have never seen before. Uh, and then we talk about voter fatigue. He's one of the guys who suffers from that as well. You know, I said when he won MVP and defense player of the year in the same season, I'm like, man, he might have to average 40 to ever win this award again. And he might, he just might mess around and do it. It's tough for them right now. They're, they've only won four of their last 10 games. They're a little bit of a rough patch. They're trying to wait to see what's going on with Chris Middleton. But he's up there. He's always going to be productive. He's always going to be in the conversation. And like Chandler said, a big January, we even talk about him as the MVP going into the all-star break. Uh, it's just a crowded field, and it's tough to really give out that award today. Uh, but that's testament to those guys and their performances so far this year. I love how healthy the league seems to me as far as the fact that we have this many people really realistically in the MVP race. I, the the rush year, the MVP rush year, I feel like we got a little bit spoiled and again, probably a little desensitized. Has it taken the shine off of what could be a 30-10-5 season? Is that what's yeah, happening think- here? We're not that impressed? We just we talk about the numbers all the time, and these guys are just putting up these crazy numbers. Like like that is a that is an MVP, and you know, ten of the last twenty years, fifteen of the last twenty years. If you look at that stat next to the uh, you know the MVP <laughs> that won it, so it's uh, like Eddie just said. There's so many guys that are, are doing this now and on good teams, and 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 the reason that those teams are winning are those guys. And you look at a guy like Jokic and, and, and Luca and KD and Tatum, those guys are doing the same thing they're doing, but they've had these loud performances next week. Giannis gives us 60 and, and then 45 and then 50. <laughs> He's jumping now KD. And like, you know what I mean? So it's going to go back and forth all year long, um, but it's going to, and then by the way, Joel Embiid is not even on here. And I think it's for a good reason. <laughs> yes. You could you could blindfold me right now and point to any one of these five guys, and I'd be okay with all of them winning MVP. Yeah, and you got somebody yeah, like Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell having a great season on a winning team, just scored seventy one. It's a testament to what Beetle just said. A lot of a lot of good health in this in the league this year. Knock on wood. I know Steph Curry's out. I know a couple guys are out, but we're seeing a lot of superstars, and we didn't get that the last few years for whatever reason. So yeah, we we've been lucky to have that, and we're getting we're getting rewarded for it with these performances. I'm knocking on all of the wood because I want people to stay healthy. It's just so much more fun to watch. All right, enough with the MVP talk. We 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 spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> there are other awards that we need to discuss, and Giannis's teammate might very well be in the running for one of those. Bobby Portis averaging 14 and 10, sixth man for the Bucks this season, first in rebounds and double doubles off the bench. Eddie, you buying him as a very deserving sixth man of the year candidate? Yeah, absolutely. And he, you know, when you watch them, he plays so free. Like he plays like he has the ultimate green light, which is kind of funny because hmm. if you remember Bobby Portis earlier in his career, it was just not the player he was. And even when he had the thing with Miritic in, in, in Chicago, people were wondering how long he was going to stick around the league. He found a really great spot for him here. And they give him the freedom to do whatever he wants on that court. And he's rewarded them with great play, he had great playoff performances in their finals run. They gave him a big contract. And, and yeah, that's 10 rebounds off the bench is tough. And, and yeah, he, he's one of those guys. You got to wonder about him for this award. And it's, 
it's a long time coming from him because he's been a key contributor for that team for quite some time. And so, yeah, he'd be more than deserving of winning that. Yeah, I agree. Taylor? I mean, he's, yeah. yeah, he's so important to the team. When you watch them play, he's that muscle. He's that physical presence. He posts up. He gets offensive rebounds. He knocks down threes. Um, he's having a really, really good year. I don't even know who else would be in it. I mean, like Russ Westbrook, maybe uh, Benedict Matherin, but the, the importance of this guy and what he does, he's a starter on a lot of teams. <clears throat> Milwaukee's having a great year. They're going to get home court advantage. Um, but, but Bobby Portis is, is definitely in the running for this award if he continues to play the way he's playing. Why, I like why the is, six man. Why are we giving a Grayson Allen to shout out right here? Bobby Portis. <laughs> You know why? Big because Big no, every once in a while, bro. yeah, yeah. Port, the port is shot. Also, sometimes you just got to remind the world who's punchable, and then you just show a Grayson Allen video right there, and then the world says thank you very much. La. Um, really high on the list, that guy. Oh, not no, no. He is my whole list, and he has been for, <laughs> since two. <laughs> that, clip, that clip shows Bobby Portis's value too, because if yeah. someone's going to do it with Grayson Allen, Bobby Portis is right there. Right. I feel like the list of people who are willing to take a shot at Grayson Allen is very, very, very long and getting longer by the day. All right, Kyrie Irving, Everybody. Eddie, are you ready for this? This is the big mystery as we get closer and closer to All Star Weekend because. Will he or won't he? We obviously know how Kyrie Irving started the season. A lot of chaos, right? But <laughs> since then, averaging 26, five, just under five assists a game, shooting 49% from the floor, 36 and a half from three. And he's played in 26 of the Nets' 36 games so far. So I'm going to start with Chandler on this one. Are you buying him as an all-star? Yeah, and uh, keep doing it. He's going to be an all-star starter. Like I, I put Jalen Brown. Uh, and Donovan Mitchell as my two guards earlier in the season. But, I mean, you can't sleep on what he's doing. He is making us forget all the nonsense off the court that, you know, he has brought to the table this year. Um, and he's a huge piece. Obviously, KD is, is, is as well. But he's a huge piece to the success and the turnaround that this team is having. I mean, you just said his numbers. He's shooting 50% from the field, 38 from three. And, and he's hit huge shots for them in the fourth. Um, he, he's letting KD, you know, kind of rock. And they're going yin and yang back and forth. Uh, I, I think if he continues this, you put him and Donovan Mitchell as not only all-stars, but starters. Yeah, John Vaughn has had found a great balance for Kevin and Kyrie. A lot of for these past couple of years, you know, they occupy a lot of the same spots on the floor. They like to do a lot of the same stuff. A lot of people are wondering, like, how is that going to work? But that early second quarter and that fourth quarter has been Kyrie's domain, and John Vaughn has unleashed him w with the offense. And 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 in a lot of a lot of ways, it's made Ben Simmons better with that second unit as well as they start those second quarters. And he's able to come off the ball. He's able to be a facilitator when he wants to be, and he always has an escape valve with Kyrie. I think he's a starter. I, I said that when we did our list uh, a, a week ago and I, yeah, it's going to be a convo all the way until it's announced, whether it's Mitchell, uh, Jalen or Kyrie. And it, it's a tough decision to make, you know, one of those guys has to miss out and come off the bench, but they're all three deserving of being all-stars for sure. And I told Kyrie yesterday, you might have to win that Jerry West award this year. <laughs> he, he's looking clutch. And, 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 you know, I don't know if he'll get the votes. I don't know if he has the good, the good fortune to get all the votes from the, from the media at this point. But mm. he, he, he liked that. He liked hearing that he'd be the first guy to win that award. So he's I in that, like he put himself in that Barry Bonds room where like, yeah, you did stuff, but people aren't going to vote for you for a variety of other reasons. So it'd be interesting. And it also just shows you how good and talented this dude is that he was in and out of the lineup dealing with yeah. all the stuff he's done not with the team. And then the minute he gets back to the team, like, all right, game on, like, let's go. I'm still Kyrie Irving and I'm going to dominate the game tonight. So it, it, it's hats off to him. And, and he, honestly, this is, he's had a fantastic year. And, and again, he's a critical piece of them going forward. And it's kind of making us somewhat forget about what's going on. I mean, Nets it was crazy when I'm reading that. And three. Nets yeah, are 17 like, and three since he came back. And he and only so. missed 10 games. That, that period of time. I mean, even last night when Jacques Vaughn was talking about He's really only been on the job for two months. It felt like an eternity. So I was a little bit shocked by all of those numbers. Like, okay, um, we got to talk playoff because I, I this is that, why not speculate, right? The Dallas Mavericks right now on a nice little run. I hate to admit it as a Spurs fan. Uh, seven game win streak. They beat the Rockets last night. They won eight of their last 11. So right now sitting in the four spot in the West. So Eddie, as the lock for home court, are you buying the Mavericks? 
So the teams above them are the Pelicans, Grizzlies, and the Nuggets. The teams right below them are the Kings and the Clippers. And yeah, mm. I can see that. I, mm. I, I could see them passing up the Pelicans. They look great. I mean, you got to remember this is this team had one of the top five defenses in the league last year when they had all their guys and, and they figured out a way to play great defense, even with Luca. And as much as I joke about Jokic's defense, Luca actually will get out there and try to get physical guys reach and, and, and try to, to be disruptive. So they've shown they have playoff potential with this roster and what they can do in the playoffs. They've shown they can win a ton of playoff of regular season games as well. Definitely see them as a top four seed going forward, especially as they get Maxi Cleaver back. And that might take a month or two, but they're only going to get better as this season goes on. And as they all get more well-defined in their roles, Luca's been amazing. Like we said, he's an MVP candidate. And by the end of the season, he might be the runaway MVP with his numbers. So yeah, I, I got him up there for sure. Really? A lock, Chandler? I know you like the Mavericks, but a lock. I don't I don't know if it's a lock. I'm looking at the standings, I, they're better than the Kings and they're better than the Trailblazers. And I think depending how quick the Warriors, the Suns, and the Clippers can get healthy, I think those three teams have the potential to be better than the Mavs and finish stronger than them. But yeah, when you have Luka doing what he's doing and those other guys that we always talk about, the Christian Woods, the Tim Hardaways, Dinwiddie, those guys, if they can keep giving him 15 to 25 a night and, and find an, uh, uh, you know, a Robin to his Batman. Yeah. To say a lock, ugh, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a lock, but I think they're having, they're going to be right there. You know what? I don't know who's keeping track in a notebook of all the things we say, um, but I'd like to go ahead and put it down. The Mavericks finished seventh in the West. I just, I just had a vision. It's one of those <laughs> visions. I can't help myself. So yeah, write it down. Danny, uh, taking a quick break. When we come back, it's time to start another streak with our parlays, or we just eliminate Chandler from making guesses and we continue to be on a hot streak when we return. America's number one sports book just got even better because you can now bet on horse racing directly in the sports book app. Not only can you place bets on live horse racing, but you can watch horse races live right from the app. We make it easy to bet on horse racing with races going off every five minutes. Free picks and easy tutorials to help you learn about horse racing. Bet on horse racing today directly in the FanDuel Sportsbook app or learn more at fanduel.com slash horse racing. Well, it's that time of the show where we show how genius we are. Uh, this was our parlay from yesterday. Oh, we almost continued the streak. Chandler, what say you about this? I mean, we lost by half of a point in an off <laughs> It's a joke. <laughs> but, uh, but it's you, and that's what makes it on brand. <laughs> so I love it so much. <laughs> okay. it, was, it was wild watching that late because it just it looked like they did it. Trey hit the free throw, yeah. it looked like it was over. And it, There's yeah, also it was not like, a worse yeah. feeling than you both hitting and mine being the last game to, to either win it or lose it. I hate I'm gonna start it was a great feeling to game. be honest. <laughs> Honestly, I haven't missed yet, but you know, I don't want to brag about that too much. Um, the good news is we can we can start another streak right now, and we're gonna try to. So Eddie, kick us off. Your leg is what? I got the Kings with the points, actually more than I picked this morning. So I'll take the three points. They just Ooh. beat them last week at home. They're coming off a tough loss in Memphis. They're going to Utah. I got the Kings beating them again. Okay, okay. Uh yeah, I'm going with somewhat of a layup here. I'm going Bucks just to outright beat the Wizards, which, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Keep it down. simple, Chandler. Keep it I simple. I like that. <laughs> I need to get back on the board. Yeah, you start Let's back at the bottom and build back up. Okay, I'm gonna go uh Oklahoma City playing Boston tonight. I decided to go Shea Gilgis Alexander under 29 and a half points. That is what happens if you win, uh, wager 20 bucks. You could possibly win 69. Hey, -o. um, I feel good about it, guys. Streak starts today again. Yes, yes, yeah, totally. yeah. No, Eddie, I hope Eddie's not confident at all. But that's, that's 69. <laughs> I know we <laughs> that's gonna do it. Like a a a 12? <laughs> yes, that's gonna do it for us. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow morning. It's time to go take a nap. Be safe.